Welcome back to my video series on the titration of mustard. If you've been following the previous two videos in my series, then you will have set up and done your lab and hopefully collected some data. Here's a list of the values you're going to need to calculate the percentage of acetic acid. First of all, the mass of the beaker. Second of all, the mass of your water that you added to the beaker. Third of all, the mass of the stirring bar that you used. To shorten the calculations for the mass of mustard used, combine all of the above values into one. You'll see why next. By subtracting the mass of the beaker, water, and stirring bar from the mass of the beaker, water, stirring bar, and mustard combined, you can easily derive the mass of mustard used. Finally, you're going to want to have recorded the volume of sodium hydroxide you used to reach the end of your titration. Also, remember to record its concentration. If you remember, the end point is when the solution changed from yellow to red. Now, let's describe what's happening behind the scenes, so to speak, during the reaction. For this, we will be using the net ionic equation. This reaction begins with a solution of dissociated acetic acid. Hydroxide ions are then added to the solution of acid to form liquid water and the acetate ion in its aqueous form. Take a look at the balanced net ionic equation that we went over earlier. You can see that the acetic acid reacts in a one to one ratio with the hydroxide ions. What does this mean? Well, this means that for every molecule of acetic acid present in the solution of water, there's a complementary molecule of hydroxide that reacts and bonds with it in order to reach the endpoint of the titration. This also means that we can equalize the moles of acetic acid and hydroxide because they react in a one to one ratio. When conducting an experiment, you may sometimes not get the results that you're looking for. This is exactly what happened in my case. What very likely happened during the experiment is that the hydroxide ions were not given enough time to fully react with the acetic acid molecules in the mustard solution. This resulted in an untimely endpoint for the titration. As the turmeric changed color, the acetic acid in the mustard was still going into solution and reacting with the hydroxide ions. This gave an artificially high value for the percentage of acetic acid. This error could have easily been avoided if I had simply waited longer between additions of titrate to the titrated solution. If I had done this, then the acetic acid would have had more time to react with the hydroxide ions in solution and let the pH stabilize. For the future, I know this, and that is the beauty of science. For every error that you make, you gain new, insightful knowledge that you can use in subsequent experiments to improve the results. I hope you've had a good time watching this video series. Goodbye.